Check what I have. That was a gift from the people at Steinberg that I met at NAM. Pretty cool cup, but don't worry, this is not gonna be a video talking about a coffee mug, but a Q&A video, because I received a bunch of questions in the past few weeks, so I decided to make a Q&A video, and this time, we're mainly gonna talk about Cubase. Hey, what's going on my friends? Chris here from Mixdown Online. Now, since this video is mainly going to be about Cubase, I have a sponsor, myself. Okay, the ultimate guide to Cubase, which is my online course that is all Cubase. So if you want to get control over the software, you want to be a champ on working with Cubase, you can check the ultimate guide to Cubase. I'm going to leave the link down below. All right, so now let's jump into this video with the first question. Hi Chris, is it possible to copy some automation from one track and paste it on another track? All right, so yes, it's possible and I am gonna show you how I do it. Okay, now I have an automation, a volume automation on this track and I wanna just copy paste it on this track. Okay, so I'm gonna open the automation lane of the base track that I wanna copy the automation on. I'm gonna make sure that I'm also on the volume automation right here. Um, so there's um, a couple of ways I can do this. First, what I can do is to use the range selection tool, select what I wanna, just the region I wanna copy, okay, that uh, automation I wanna copy, I'm just gonna select my automation lane off the track I'm gonna copy from. I'm gonna select that region with my range selection tool. Click on Control C for copy, and then I'm gonna select on the other track where I wanna copy that automation on and select that automation lane of that track. And if you pay attention, we have the range uh, that is uh, directly on that automation lane. So from that point on, I'm just gonna click on Control and V to paste it. And there you go. If I click on read, you can see the same automation going on. And this is gonna copy paste all automation within that range to the exact location. Very practical. Uh, you can also, um, you can also just, you know, copy whatever you wanna copy from that automation lane and just use your cursor, okay, uh, or playhead. And if you wanna just paste it directly on the same track or on the other track, but on a different location, you can just select all of the points, the automation points, uh, control copy, and then select the location where you wanna paste it and click on control V, okay, or command V if you're on Mac. And this is gonna copy paste those, uh, those automation points on the other track or on the same track. All right, so now let's go to the next question. Will direct offline processing be affected if I add pre gain or clip gain after the fact? Let's go in Cubase and check it out. Okay, I have a drum loop right here. I'm gonna select it, click on F7, which will bring up the direct offline processing window. And I'm using the digital compressor that comes with Cubase. Uh, so basically this will affect the audio event uh, directly. Um, and what I can do here is to apply that, uh, that compressor. So if I wanna listen to the effect of that compressor, I just click on Audition on top. All right, so now I'm overdoing it just for the sake of this tutorial. So now I'm gonna close my uh, direct offline processing window, and now I have that compressor directly on that audio event. Okay, now the question is if I want, if I'm adding pre-gain or clip gain, for that matter, is that gonna affect uh, what's coming into the direct offline processing? window, okay? Uh, the answer is no. Once you have uh, that processing on your clip, on your event, um, if you pre-gain afterwards or clip gain afterwards, it's not gonna matter. Um, the signal is still gonna be compressed the same as it was before, okay? So if I bring uh, my clip gain down, okay? Listen to that, the, the effect of the compressor, it's still there. Okay, I'm gonna bring it back up, and then let's uh, 
pregame that lower. It doesn't matter, it's still, uh, I still get the same amount of compression of the direct offline processing option, okay? Uh, and the reason is very simple. Uh, when you use direct offline processing, that will affect the audio event that was recorded, okay? So even if you uh, if you add some pre-gain or clip gain, the signal has already been processed before you apply those. So, uh, so basically, direct offline processing is pre pre-gain and pre-clip gain, pre-insert, you know, pre-everything. Basically, it affects the audio event itself, even before you apply pre-gain or clip gain. So if after uh, adding your effects into the direct offline processing, you need to uh, to gain stage your signal a bit more, you know, you don't have to worry, gain stage your signal, you can use uh, clip gain. Uh, it's not gonna affect whatsoever uh, the effects that you have inserted as direct offline processing, okay? Um, so I hope that helps. All right, so now let's go to the next question. Again, in Cubase, how did you make your uh, HC, which is high cut filter and low cut filter gain as a knob instead of a bar? Okay, let me explain to you what that means. So basically, if we go into uh, our, a channel settings window, we have uh, the EQ right in the middle of that window. And at the bottom, we have the uh, parameters of that EQ. And as you can see, they are uh, they have the look of knobs instead of, um, of bars, okay? So if you wanna change that around and you're working with Cubase 10.5, what you need to do is just to go on the top right of that EQ section window and click on equalizer settings. And then then you'll be able to, um, to select between knobs or sliders, okay? Uh, and this is what you're gonna get between the two, okay? So if you prefer to have a slider type look, uh, just select the controls as a slider, or if you're like me and you kinda like the knob look, uh, just select the controls as knobs. Now, if you're working in the previous version of Cubase, because this is only for Cubase 10.5, um, what you need to do if you're working with 10 or 9.5 or Cubase 9 and so on, uh, you need to go on the top uh, right of the equalizer window and you'll see a green arrow that is aiming down. Um, that green icon, uh, that green arrow icon is where you're gonna be able to, uh, to, to, to toggle between those different looks, okay? So very simple. And now for the next question, is there a way to send a signal to an effects track? pre-insert uh, with Cubase. For example, I want to be able to send my signal to a reverb before the signal hits the compressor or EQ, etc. Thanks again. Now, the quick answer to this is no, there's no option that uh, uh, will allow you to send a signal pre-insert. And when uh, uh, he talks about pre-insert, that means um, that uh, the signal is sent to an effects channel track or a group track before uh, the signal hits uh, the insert section. Because um, usually what happens is when you send your signal uh, to a, uh, an effects channel track, let me create one just to give you an example here. Uh, there you go, so let's go with this quick effects channel track. Okay, um, now it's right here. Okay, so now what's happening here, if we bring down the sense, okay, uh, we have that signal, the signal of that channel that is going directly into this new effects channel track. Now, what you can do is to send that signal pre-fader or post-fader, okay? So that means uh, that if you send the signal pre-fader, the signal is gonna be sent to that, um, to that effects channel track before the signal hits the fader. That simple. If you um, you add that post fader, that means that um, uh, the uh, the uh, level of the fader will affect the amount of signal sent to that effects channel, okay? So with that said, if you need to send your signal, the signal of a track uh, to your reverb, okay, before your signal hits the inserts, what I would do is I would just duplicate that track and uh, make sure that you don't have any insert on the duplicated track. Okay, so you remove all plugins out of that track. And this is the track that you're gonna send to your reverb, 
Okay, and what you need to do is to send that uh, pre faders. So if you send that pre fader, you can bring down the fader of that track so you don't hear it in your mix. So doing so is going to send that signal without any inserts whatsoever to the reverb. And by sending that signal pre fader to your effects channel track, you'll be able to bring down that fader, the channel's fader of the unprocessed duplicated track. You'll be able to bring that fader down so you don't hear it in your mix. Now let's go to the next question. One problem I'm having is getting too much level into the plugin, causing clipping in the plugin. Any thoughts about that? Do we ever need to insert a limiter before the compressor? Now, um, he's referring to my video on uh, the vintage compressor. So now the problem that he has is uh, he's getting way uh, too much signal coming into the compressor. So basically what I'm gonna do here, let me just get rid of that track. And uh, let's look at what we have here on the, uh, the drum loop track that I have here. Okay, I'm gonna insert a the vintage compressor and this is the plugin he is referring to. Uh, so now if you have too much signal coming into that compressor, and I've talked about that before, um, there's a gain staging problem somewhere. That means that the signal coming into the compressor is way too loud. So what's happening is maybe your recording is a bit too loud, okay? So maybe you need to gain stage your uh, the signal of your track down, okay, so you have a bit more control on what's coming into your plugins. Uh, so for example, if you need to do so, you can clip gain down your actual event, okay, like this. Or you can also use pre-gain like we've seen earlier. Okay, by using pre-gain, uh, that will bring down the level of that track before the signal hits the insert section. So that is another way to do it. Maybe the problem is not that. Maybe your gain staging is good when you start your mix, and maybe it's the plugin that comes before your compressor that is the problem. So for example, um, on this track, I have the Studio EQ that comes before the vintage compressor. Um, so I don't know, check it out. Maybe your output, there's an output level here. Maybe the output is way too high and you need to bring it down uh, to balance your signal, the output signal of that plugin before it hits the compressor. Okay, so this is something that you need to check out. Check the, the, the plugins that comes before your compressor, just to make sure that the output of those plugins are not too loud. Um, so there you go. So this way you're gonna avoid clipping your plugins. So I hope that helps. All right, so this is gonna be it for today. I hope that was helpful. If so, share, like, subscribe, leave your comments, your questions down below. And also don't forget that if you wanna dive into Cubase way more and you wanna gain control over the software, I have my ultimate guide to Cubase online course that is available. I'm gonna leave the link down below. It has helped so far more than 500 people, okay, with more than 11 hours of video footage, all Cubase, okay? So uh, the ultimate guide to Cubase link is down below. All right, my friends, until next time, take care and see you.